In this video, I'll show you how easy it is to create a drop-down menu in Framer. We're gonna go over the basics and set up the responsive version as well. Yo, what is up everyone? Welcome to the first video of the channel. My name is Guilherme. I'm very excited to start sharing some design tips, tutorials, and other Framer resources with you. I already have another channel, but it's in Portuguese, which is my native language, and I figured I'll start creating some content in English as well, right? So let's get right into it today. In this video, I'm gonna show you how easy it is to create drop-down menus in Framer. I already have a page set up for us. And in our case, we're gonna be adding a drop-down to one of these items here in our header. So let me double click to go inside the component editor. I created components for the menu items as well. So let me show you real quick. We have a few variants, we have a hover state for the main variant. And I also have the icon there. Let me just disable the variable here. So you can see I added the drop down icon and a variable to toggle the visibility on or off. So now I can go back to my header and let's say I wanted to add a drop down to the support item here. I can first enable the icon. And then from here, we're going to be using overlays to create our drop down menu. That's why it's extremely simple. Framer makes it so easy for us. I'm going to select my item, go to overlays, click on the plus sign. It's going to automatically add a relative overlay because we are already inside a component. And on the right panel again, we have a few important options here. First, I want to show the overlay on hover. We can also change the position and also the alignment. I'm not going to change those for now. And I'm also going to leave the dismiss on auto. Another cool thing that you can do here is change the appear effect. Uh, by default, it comes with the fade in and fade out, which is pretty cool. But you can also, for example, change the offset value in order to create a different kind of animation. And from here, so this frame is going to act just like any other frame on your website. You can add whatever you want to this. We can start by adding a layout to it. So we turn this into a stack. And like I said, from here, you can add whatever you want. But to save even more time, what I'm going to do is go to the insert panel and search for a menu here. So let's search for the menu mixed. And just like that, we already have a working drop down. So if I go back to the main page, open the preview, you can see that we already have a beautifully designed drop down. Now, in order to access the overlay editor again, we can either click on the layers panel here or go to the overlays tab. And from here, we can, of course, already change the text for each link. Uh, so let's say help articles. But I'm going to do something a little bit different here. I'm also going to create a component for each of these items. This is going to help us create the responsive version later on. So I'm going to right click, select create component. Let's call this menu item. And I don't want to spend too much time here. I'm first going to reduce the gap between these elements. I'm also going to replace the default icon. So let's insert a phosphor icon here. First, I want to reduce the size. I'm also going to change this to a headset and also changing the color to white. So this is going to be our desktop variant. And from here, what I actually want to do is just increase the padding a little bit because I'm also going to create a hover state for this variant. And in this hover state, I just want a very light background color. And in order to set that up, I'm actually going to go to the main variant here, add a white background with, let's say, um, eight pixels of order radius. But of course, in the primary variant, I'm going to set the opacity to zero. And in the hover state, let's change this to maybe 4%. Let's see how it looks. Awesome. Great. Now, I want to create another variant for the mobile version. And this is going to be basically a simplified version of this component. So let me reduce the size a little bit. Um, 
Now I can also remove the border here. We're not going to need it. I will reduce the size of the icon itself. I'm going to hide the, the little text there because like I said, this is basically like a simplified version. And I'm also going to set the padding to zero and reduce the gap. Awesome. The last step here is to create variables for each of these text elements and also the icon. So let me select the icon first. I'm going to go to the name, click on the plus sign and create a variable for it. So this is going to be our icon. Now the title going over to content, clicking on the plus sign, create a variable plain text and I'm going to keep the name as it is. Same thing for the smaller text. Let's create a variable. So this can be actually, I'm just going to leave it as title two for now. Perfect. Now I can go back to my header, open up the overlay and can already delete the under two. And I'm going to duplicate my component two times. I can also click on the overlay, change the height to fit content. So it shows everything. I'm also going to reduce the width a little bit and reduce the gap between these elements right here. Let's set it to maybe eight, maybe six. All right. And of course I want to change these items. So number two could be community expert help. And let's change the icon to users. And the last one could be emergency, urgent issues. And let's change this to exclamation mark. Another thing that I can do here is maybe reduce the padding. One thing that I forgot, it's not going to matter here for us, but since these would be buttons, you would also want to come in here in the link and create a variable for the link as well. Right. So now when you are editing your overlay, you can just click on one of them and enter the proper link here. Okay. Now that we have our menu items set up correctly, I am also going to turn this entire overlay into a component. So I'm going to right click and create component. So let's call this um, support drop down, for example. And basically the same thing here. I want to create a variant for desktop and a variant for our mobile version. Here, I am just going to change the variant to the simplified version. I can also probably reduce the padding and let's remove the fill and the order as well. And also set the order radius to zero. Perfect. All right. Now that we have everything in place, we can start working on our mobile version off the header here. So let's say this is the uh, mobile header. And I'm going to start by reducing the width just so we get an idea of how it's going to look on a smaller screen. And from here, it's going to be a relatively simple process and you're going to see why. So I'm first going to start by changing the direction of the content stack. So the elements stack on top of each other. I'm also going to do the same thing for the menu items stack here, changing the direction as well. I can also already change the width of this stack to fill. So it takes up the whole screen. I'm also going to align the elements to the left and also reduce the gap here. Now for this case, I don't want these buttons down here. What I do want is well, first a close button for the menu, of course, but I'm also going to add the sign up button on the top. In order to save time, what I've done is I have already added those elements in my primary variants. So if I open up the layers panel, you can see that they're there. They're just hidden and this is going to make my life so much easier. I can just come in here and enable the visibility of these items. So right click show. Same thing for the menu icon. So perfect. See how easy it is. Now all I have to do is just click on this stack and of course disable the visibility. So very, very easy to do. And now what I want to do is take advantage of the component that we created. 
So I'm going to the assets panel, searching for the support drop down. I'm going to put that in there, change the variant to mobile. But for the mobile version of our header, I'm not going to be using the overlays. I'm actually going to create this interaction manually with a new component. The thing here is if I try to delete the overlay and the support item, when I go back to my main variant, the overlay will be gone as well. So always be careful with that. What I'm going to do instead is duplicate the support item here. And I can, of course, hide. Well, first I can delete the overlay. So basically the setup I have here is the same item, but one has the overlay, which is what we're going to use for our desktop version. And the other one doesn't have the overlay, which is what we're going to use for the mobile component. So I can hide the one that I'm not going to need in the primary variant. And let's just hide this one, which has the overlay. And I want to show the other one. Perfect. From here, what I can do is just wrap these two items in a new stack, line them to the left. Let's reduce the gap a little bit. And like I said, I want to create a new component with this new stack. The thing is, I can't do that on a secondary variant. So if I right click on it, you're not going to see the create component option. So basically, I have to find that. Let's just rename this real quick. I have to find that in the primary variant. And from here, I can right click and create component. So let's say drop down oval. And first, let's enable the visibility of these two elements. From here, what I want to do is change the direction. I also want to change the variant of these items. I forgot to do that. So let me first select all these items. I'm going to change this to mobile and do the same thing with this one. And from here, I just want to create a very simple variant with the bottom part hidden. So let's turn off the visibility for that. And we also have to change, yeah, changing the, the little arrow here because we need this arrow to be pointing up. And I do have another variant for that, which is this one. Awesome. Last step, revert this to what it was. Here, the last thing is defining the interactions between these two variants. We can also rename these. So let's say this is open. This is closed. What I'm going to do here is select the item, press L on my keyboard and select the closed variant. So I want the interaction to trigger on click. And basically do the other way around. So don't forget that everything that I add to my primary variant is going to be carried over to the other variants. So the interaction is already there. All we have to do is just open this up and select the open variant. Let's see how it looks. Beautiful. Working as expected. Now we can go back to our header here and change the variant to closed on default. We're almost at the end from here. What I want to do is create another variant for our header, which is going to be the mobile header closed version. Of course, without the menu item. So basically all I'm going to do is select the stack, disable the visibility and also changing the variant here of this menu icon. Perfect. Lastly, just as we did in the other component, we want to set up interactions between these two variants. So I'm going to select the trigger, which is the icon here. Press L on my keyboard, select the other variant and do the same thing for this one. So select the icon, press L and select this one. I think that's it, guys. Let's see how it looks. So I'm going to go back to my page. First, replace these two variants with the header closed. And let's see how it looks. Desktop version with the hover effect. Looking great. Let's see how it looks on our phone. Opening the menu. Opening the drop down. Perfect. Everything works as expected and the main benefit of using components like we did here 
with our overlays is let's say I want to maybe add another item here. Let's call this item four. It's going to automatically update on every screen size. So if I open my phone here, the item number four is already there. So this can save you a lot of time and also maintain the consistency throughout your project. And that is it for this tutorial. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more content coming soon. And I'll see you in the next one.